large uh, hadron collider LHC right you know that uh, what happened that um, they started and it was switched on and they got uh, first test run successful so certainly it's event uh, by the way today morning uh, radio Canadian news they started not from election future election here in this country but uh, from this event from uh, LAT and the same if you look at CNN news so this is really topic news okay so let me first uh, describe the structure of this course so it's based uh, on this book uh, course outline certainly you can get from web it's on web and this uh, book uh, by Peshkin from Stanford University and Slack and Schroeder and um, as far as I know Perimeter Institute wants to get this uh, two years uh, course in quantum field theory so this is uh, one fourth of this course we will uh, teach in this uh, class uh, so I will start from the very beginning really from basic right um, concerning evaluation scheme evaluation scheme is uh, quite simple so we will get assignments and uh, there will be final project so this is evaluation currently assignments this will be 80 percent and 20 percent final project in the end of this course okay some questions maybe you have concerning the organization and uh, some thoughts Oh, we will see. You know, it's too early to talk about that. Yeah. Yeah, sure, problem. No, no, mostly problem solving problem. Yes. Yeah. Uh, mostly solving problem. Yeah. But uh, project will be uh, maybe some essay or some particular, for example, paper, not in. Um, uh, uh, paper, uh, fresh paper, maybe uh, which was published long ago, but the kind of you should study. Yeah, please. Yeah, take. Okay, I, I briefly. Uh, repeat so this is uh, course outline you can get from um, uh, from web print out and this is book uh, the course will be based on it does not mean that I will follow step by step no uh, but certainly mm, it's very useful uh, to use it and then evaluation scheme assignment 80 percent and in the very end uh, this uh, mm, final project 20 percent and uh, I will start from basics very beginning uh, quantum uh, field theory so when I say quantum field theory I implicitly imply mostly relativistic quantum field theory in this course connected with particle physics and high energy physics but actually quantum field theory is a framework also necessary framework for condensed matter um, I uh, also uh, briefly describe some stuff useful for uh, condensed matter but mostly is this course connected with relativistic mm, field theory now apparently all of you uh, know that quantum field theory is important because it's used 
And in order to survive in modern physics now, one should really be quantum field theory. Of course, if you're experimentalist, you could survive without that. But uh, especially in high energy physics, particle physics, cosmology, and even condensed matter, as I said. Now, um, you know, the standard model, which uh, already is established and uh, it described consistently, no doubt about that, uh, three interaction fundamental. This is uh, um, electromagnetic, weak, and strong interaction, or electroweak and strong interaction. It's quantum field theory, right? Uh, there is open problem uh, now, problem of quantum gravity, uh, but certainly modern uh, theory of uh, gravity, classical gravity, is field theory. And we suppose that right uh, theory of quantum gravity will be uh, based on some kind of field theory. Moreover, even string theories, string theories, uh, it seems it's a kind of, it's very possible that string theory is just another framework to describe, again, quantum field theory. So it's very difficult to avoid uh, using quantum field theory in this world. So we understand the importance of, uh, it's easy to understand in hindsight, of quantum field theory. Historically, what happened, how it appeared, very briefly. Uh, it was connected uh, certainly with uh, the discovery of Dirac equation. When Dirac found his equation, and moreover, he not immediately, but he recognized that this equation leads us not just to electron, but to its antiparticle, positron. It was not immediately clear. And then after that, it immediately became clear that one should uh, consider some theory which describe many body system. Because even description of some standard bound object, like say two body, like in the case of hydrogen F, right? Usually what is hydrogen F? It's two body problem in quantum mechanics, right? This is bound state of electron and proton. But actually it's not the end of the story. Because there is contribution of what is called electron-positron pairs. Actually, in some sense, hydrogen atom, if we consider seriously it, is a system composed of infinite number degrees of freedom. This is, in formal language, vacuum correction, radiative correction, famous lamp shift, and so on. So point is that because there are antiparticles, number of particles, in principle, is not conserved number in relativistic field theory. This is crucial. And um, with energy which is higher, higher, this point plays more and more important role. In the case of hydrogen atom, this point leads to small correction to spectrum, and they are important, but still they are small. But actually at high energy, because you cannot stop production of uh, pairs, like electron, positron, proton, antiproton. What happens at Large Hadron Collider, you should consider many body systems. And quantum field theory, this is exactly framework to describe uh, physics of uh, such system. So 
no need, I believe, to uh, add to importance of this quantum field theory. And essentially, I believe we can start, right? Okay. So today, I will uh, consider, I will start from the basic symmetry in relativistic field theory, which is called Lorentz group, Lorentz symmetry. Prerequisite in principle for this course is quantum mechanics 100%. If you did not take quantum mechanic course, it's absolutely, I believe, meaningless to take this course. Uh, I believe this is main, of course, if you already uh, learn uh, something connected with special relativity, uh, Lorentz transformation could be useful. But I will uh, describe, I actually will start to describe this stuff uh, right now. Concerning mass, in principle, it's uh, useful for this course to know at least the notion of group, group theory. Uh, but again, I will uh, describe some uh, necessary elements for those groups we will encounter in this uh, for. Okay, now again, let me repeat, new people came. So the course, uh, course outline you can print out from web, and this is um, the book uh, the course uh, will be based on. This is uh, Peshkin and Schroeder uh, course. Uh, book, sorry. Okay, so you can, can I use this for, you can see this blackboard? Oh, he cannot hear me. I think they can see. Oh, they can, they can. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Okay, let me start from very, yes, go. Uh, for what? For metrics? Yeah. I will, I won't just introduce it. Okay. Could you wait one minute? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. good. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, so first of all, let me introduce notation and convention. What we will use, right? Okay, so we will use this metric. Which is now, I would say, uh, Lorentz metric standard when we have three minus for spatial coordinate and plus one for time. It's also sometimes convenient to use this notation diagonal one minus one minus one minus one. Okay, so this is our four vector. Right, so we will use uh, Greek indices for uh, this Lorentz for indices and for spatial coordinate, we will use Latin uh, for this guide. Okay, now certainly we have standard uh, relations between 
covariant vectors with lower indexes and contravariant with, with, <coughs> with upper indices. And we can use uh, this stuff. We can use, for example, dot product for those four vectors. And this uh, means something like that. Here I introduce also uh, four vector for energy uh, and momentum. Okay, mostly I will use um, uh, the following units like um, Peshkin and Schroeder units in which velocity of light equal one and actually Planck constant equal one. It's again very now conventional and convenient unit. But I will show you how one can actually restore in some examples H and C after getting result without them to restore. Sometimes it's important, certainly. Okay, so uh, I used already C equal one here and uh, this guy, of course, nothing else but Okay, uh, concerning value of this C and H, we are physicists, so we should know numbers, right? And they are so fundamental. So it's much easier actually to consider uh, number for product, Planck constant and C. Of course, H bar, this is initial Planck constant which he introduced over to Planck. HC, this is one approximately, of course, you never know exact. I stopped three numbers after two. And this is MAV times Fermi. Okay, Fermi one Fermi, this is length unit, and this is 10 to the minus 13 centimeter, which is 10 to the minus 15 meter. So it's essentially connected with size of nuclei, and it's very appropriate unit. Uh, now, MAV, in order you would uh, understand MAV, okay, so m mass of electron times of c square it's measured usually in mav and this is approximately half of mav but more exactly this is this 0 5 1 1 mav Okay, and now this, why it's convenient, it's easy to remember, 197 for crude estimate, in many cases, it's enough to just uh, say that this is 200, guy. Okay, let me. Right, so it's easy to remember. 200 MeV, and on the other hand, C, uh, this is, um, okay, two, I will write, seven, nine, two, four, five, eight meter inverse second, and approximately, again, it's uh, easy to remember 
one can use for estimate. This is three times 10 to the eight meter and inverse second. So then you know essentially everything, knowing C like three times 10 to the eight, easy to remember, H, C, 200 MeV. Then you can get uh, Planck constant itself, right, and so on. So it's just very, remember, I use many, many times this. <clears throat> Not every day, but uh, quite often, this uh, unit. Okay, now uh, uh, fundamental, um, fundamental uh, relation uh, for uh, this P in units C equal one, uh, this is Einstein relation, right, we can say. That P zero square equal P square momentum plus M square. But actually, if we introduce C, it will not change too much. So we have this pi zero square, and then P C square plus M square C to the four. This is fundamental relation between energy, momentum, and mass in relativistic field. Okay, this is, I believe, at this moment, it's enough for us uh, concerning notation and uh, conventions. We will use, sometimes I will return to explain some subtlety in using. Some questions here. It, it seems everything is clear. Okay. Now uh, we will start from classical stuff, which is Lorentz group and its representation. You know that uh, the Lorentz group was introduced before Einstein wrote his famous um, paper uh, connected with special relativity. Uh, he, and uh, Lorentz group is actually certainly the basis, both mathematical and physical, uh, concerning description of particle physics. Different particles, they assign to different representation of this group. And we have particles like, which are called scalar particles. For example, this Higgs boson which people hope to discover at LHC its color part. But there are spinner particles, and this is electron, and this is proton, and many, many other particles, and they have spin one half in standard units in quantum uh, mechanics. So those particles, scalar and spinner, they are assigned to different representations of Lorentz group. We have also very important particles like photon, W boson, Z boson, and they are vector particles, and they have spin one, twice as large in spin of electron, and they assign to the third representation graviton, uh, has spin two, and it's another representation of Lorentz group. Okay, so uh, let us uh, start from this is Lorentz group, right? Lorentz group. Okay, any group connected with some transformation. And uh, 
Lorentz group is connected with transformation. It was introduced of coordinate, and also it's connected with transformation of uh, momentum and energy. And this is definition, essentially, of uh, so we consider four coordinate vector x goes x prime, which is some metric which acts on x, on x initial, and in more rigorous form is the x prime mu is the lambda mu nu and X new. By the way, this matrix, so I put some space here. Sometimes I'm sure there will be many typos. You should stop me immediately if you uh, see some typo. And um, also, sometimes maybe I will omit this space. But let me introduce. What does it mean? Of course, upper, lower, they are different because of metric G mu nu, right? But it means simple thing, that this guy just connected with row, and this guy with column. That's it. So this is uh, in order you would know. But sometimes maybe I could forget. But you should remember this, to put this uh, space. OK. Uh, this is <coughs> formal at this moment. Uh, line, now real definition of Lorentz transformation, not all transformation we could put here, but those transformation which actually does not change the metric. Or one can say that x dot x, I already introduced, right, should be equal x prime dot x prime. This is definition um, of Lorentz. It's not that we can prove. We cannot prove it. We define. OK, now <clears throat> let us consider what we uh, will get from that. OK, on the left-hand side, <clears throat> what I have is this. G mu nu, x mu, x nu, quite simple. And it's equal x prime, x prime, which is equal, let me write in this way, g mu prime new prime, x prime, new prime, x prime, new prime. Important convention, standard now, that when we have repeat indices, we imply summation over them, right? Rule. This is Einstein rule he introduced. He encountered too many summation and too many indices. So rule. Uh, summation, not to write sign, symbol of sign, over repeated index. So we have here summation. OK, now let us use. Uh, this. So let us mm, substitute this transformation we know for this guy. And then <clears throat> now I will uh, write in this way, because I use prime. It's just convenient. You will see I could use any notation for indices, which I sum over 
Okay, so let me use I put prime and <coughs> let's consider this. Then mm, I have uh, the following G menu X U X new equal and this guy G menu new prime and I substitute this stuff lambda mu prime okay. Let, okay. let me again it doesn't matter but for me now I will use this stuff mu mu in order easier to compare mu prime mu x uh, mu and times this guy which I will write in similar uh, fashion lambda new prime new x new okay so now uh, it's easy, you see, to compare this and this, right? We have same x mu, x nu on the right hand side and left hand side. And from this, we have relation g mu nu equal g mu prime, nu prime, and two lambda. What does it mean? It means metric is Lorentz invariant, right? Because metric, we got this metric for prime indices, and this is same G menu because it equals this. So we have uh, this stuff. Metric is Lorentz invariant. We can get now some interesting uh, properties of lambda. So what we have uh, here, uh, we have actually, you could consider as matrix relation, this matrix and three product of three uh, matrices on the right hand side. So we can rewrite this like that. This guy could be written matrix G and now, okay, let me rewrite still one more step, G menu equal lambda mu prime mu G mu prime mu prime and lambda mu prime mu. Okay, look, we have summation row over row. What does it mean? Here we have standard in matrix. We can rewrite in this way. G as matrix equal lambda transpose G lambda, right? Because usual we have should consider if we had just lambda, not transpose summation over those two indices, but we have this. This is row, this is row, usually row column or column row. So we have transpose. Still, let's take determinant of these relations. Then we have determinant 
G. Now, fortunately, determinant of transport matrix is equal determinant of the matrix itself, right? So what we have, this is this determinant G times determinant lambda square, right? Because as I said, determinant of lambda T equal determinant of lambda. It's always like that. Cancel. And from here, we have important You see, all transformation of Lorentz group restricted by this property. It could be plus one or minus one. Actually, plus one, this is what is there called proper Lorentz transformation. Usually with minus one connected with introducing to Lorentz group, for example, parity transformation, some discrete transformation. We mostly will consider, at least in this class, this is one fourth of this two years course as it planning at this moment uh, with plus. But minus one also important. But this is strong restriction. OK. Now we should describe, we should describe Mm, representation of the Lorentz group. Lorentz group, of course, include a subgroup rotational group, right? And on the other hand, there are additional transformation which are called Lorentz boost, right? When we change velocity, so when we, sorry, when we uh, consider uh, trans transformation with changing velocity from one frame to another one. And we should describe now uh, representation, all possible finite representations. There are actually infinite dimensional, and they are extremely interesting, by the way. I will tell it later. But for us, a kind of guide is rotational subgroup. And I assume that you know representation of rotational group because you should take quantum mechanics course. And if you already taken quantum mechanics course, then you studied angular momentum. But when you studied angular momentum, you consider adding of angular momentum and so on. And this is connected with representation of uh, rotational group, yeah. of course. Uh, uh, scalar, we have usual our friend vector, three-dimensional. We have fundamental representation is actually not but spinner, which is connected with power matrices and so on. So they are here, but we have additional transformation. But this is very important for us. So Lorentz group, like rotational group, uh, it's called a uh, continuous group because it the rotational group Euler 3M, right? To describe rotation, we need to know, uh, beside matrices, we should know those three angles which are connected. So we, uh, let me, <clears throat> next step will be called I will write, and then I will continue. Algebra of Lorentz group. OK, in order uh, uh, to be not very formal, as I said, I will first consider and uh, clarify this notion, Lie algebra uh, representation in the case of uh, rotational subgroup. Let me describe.
it's called usually R. Right? K. From quantum K, can introduce generators connected through and this Okay, this is very basic and famous thing. This is definition of angular momentum or operator. We have three, of course. Right, and I could actually write J1. J2, this is, okay, another one, T3 minus X3, T1, and this is usually students and me like more than two previous connected with rotation in XY plane, it's easier to visualize, right? This. And this guy is X, sorry. First of all, I, I should write I. There will be type, I promised, and I did not lie. So just stop me, Y3, I. Okay. Those guys. Three. And it's very important to write, uh, to write um, a commutation relation between those two guys. And this is anti-symmetric, so it changes the sign <coughs> under any permutation of those indices. And by definition, epsilon 1, 2, 3 equal 1. And then we could get all different values of this uh, guy. Okay, here let me add a few words. You see I put uh, here in, when we consider Lorentz symmetry, it's important to distinguish between upper and lower indices. I put in this form because B mu is this. So actually, Automatically, when you consider derivative and you use uh, this x with upper indices, uh, which are uh, contravariant, you get covariant in mu. So this is actually important because uh, one can easily make mistake if you uh, put the wrong index here. So I put 
this here. Okay, we have this commutation relation and those three generators G I plus the rule for its their commutators plus we will allow to consider some of all those guys but with real number so we will consider linear combination of those generators uh, plus linear combination of G E with real, not complex, with real coefficients. Yield algebra, rotational algebra lead. Okay, so point is that in this case, this was great discovery in math introducing uh, in 19th century the notion of algebra Lie, because uh, our rotational group includes infinite number of matrices, right, with different value of theta. But actually, uh, we will come to that in a moment, all of them are expressed through those three generators. Algebra Li uh, has its finite. So its basis, those three generators. Point is, and this is okay, this is one, two. Point is that uh, why it's important elements of rotation or group can be written in this way like exponent minus i t e g g j i could for rotational group, it's not important, upper or lower. Point is that uh, all elements in rotational group put, can be put in this very compact form. If I just uh, said, okay, I want to study transformation for one angle, uh, Euler angle theta one equal this value theta two, that value theta three, another one, and theta one one is uh, actually connected with transformation uh, in uh, this will be two three or the same uh, like y z plane. It's not actually Euler angle exact. Theta two equal one three x plane and theta three one two x y plane. So I all all post. It's outside our 
can consider pro different and if you commutate you put for them not so just like in that it happens more complicated of rotation of transformation you reduce to description of of which is for uh, algebra rotation algebra uh, lead. So, Now we want to consider what happens with the rest of uh, Lorentz transformation, right? So we consider rotational. So let's consider now Lorentz generator. So we have at this moment no three of them connected with rotation, but there are six actually Lorentz generators. Okay, now I will use a little bit different form for generator. They satisfy their anti-symmetric. And commutator, which is crucial, as in the case of rotational group, crucial, I will then get those three, but now we have, of course, anti-symmetric six, easy uh, to calculate, right? We have six. So this is commutator. It includes, because Lorentz group, our invariant matrix, a uh, Lorentz matrix. So there, you can see, quite similar to what we had before. But I wrote in a little bit different form. So three of them, rotational generators, plus three others connected with Lorentz boost with respect to X, Y, and Z. So three plus three, three rotation and three boost. Okay, now fundamental representation and Lorentz symmetry started from is four dimensional, right? Let's describe it. Point is that this guy connected with derivatives, they act actually in infinite dimensional space like in quantum mechanics, they act on wave uh, function, right? Uh, so it's um, so-called reducible representation. It, connect, it contains um, many, many different representation connected with vectors, scalars, spinners, but we consider now concrete four-dimensional.
four-dimensional representation. Let me describe it. This is, let me introduce some vector. Let's write in quite formal form. Like in the case of rotational group, element of my Lorentz group are expressed through those famous exponents. The analog of angles, let me write four. It means now four dimensional, right? And this guy is anti symmetric. necessary because by definition this guy right is anti-symmetric and we have six parameters we could put arbitrary parameters here anti-symmetric and we will get uh, this uh, transformation in more uh, exact form it looks like that V alpha goes to V prime alpha, new vector. And now I will consider first the case of very, very small, this parameters omic. Absolute value is much, much less than one. So I could expand this in Taylor series and consider only two terms right here. One plus linear term in V. So this guy is this, and this is this. Let me write this, and then we could discuss. So this is better to write approximately here, right? So what I consider just Taylor expansion, and I left unit one, and this is usual Kronecker delta symbol, and we have this linear term. Some questions here. Maybe you already lost yourself. OK. We have this. And it's important. Let me write explicitly what this guy means. Alpha, beta. It means this. You should put Delta, because you know we uh, right now in Lorentz symmetry we distinguish between upper and lower, right? So this guy equals this, and this is important. Will be your four mu nu, and this guy is alpha prime beta. <coughs> So this order is important. Otherwise, you get wrong. And if you act on this vector contravariant, this index uh, summation 
should be done with index lowering, right? And then another index in J should be up. Only in this case, you get the right result. So this could give you signal minus. So one should be careful with that. Let me illustrate. Take one new two. Actually, you will see in X, Y way. this okay let's just evaluate j for one two alpha let me just check whether i wrote or maybe i forgot to write this okay so I wrote here, now four-dimensional representation. But, okay, before I should write here, okay. Let me write here. Concrete matrix structure. So this is a spy. D mu alpha, D nu beta, minus D mu beta, delta nu alpha. So all, in the case of four-dimensional representation, these matrices have this simple structure. Okay? So now we know this guy. It's here, then we know this, and then we know rotation, right, with this stuff. So you can look at this. Okay, by definition, this guy equal alpha, alpha prime, and G four, one, two, and this is alpha prime beta. So now you can use this relation, substitute here, and then you get this. Okay. Because we have one, two, right? Mu one, mu two. Now put this guy, first term, because alpha prime equal one, we have uh, this result i. This is g one one, and this guy delta <coughs> alpha one, delta two beta, And minus second term. Second term uh, we leave as it is. Beta. And now, okay. I got to put G to two and minus G to two. Delta one beta, delta two. Alpha, and this is T. 
So we have summation over alpha prime. It introduced, in this case, G11. In this case, because it's diagonal, right, always. In this case, G22. And what we have, we have this, um, this guy equal 1, right? Minus 1. So one should be careful, minus one in our metric, in our convention. And then we have this delta one alpha, delta two beta, and here we have plus i, and this is delta one beta, delta two alpha. Okay, this is how I got this element. Now, the matrix which correspond is the following. So let's consider first row correspond to time, to zero, right? X zero, say. And then one, two, three correspond to three spatial dimension. Then you can see because of Kronecker delta, we have non-zero elements only for spatial in this case, one, two, right? So here, we could put 0, 0, 0, 0. Right. Oh. oh, one moment. Yeah, it's OK. 0, 0. Now, let us look. This row is correspond to 1. And uh, we have this result from this guy, minus i, 0, and then we have uh, 1, 2, and this guy, 0, i, 0, 0, and 0, 0, 0, 0. OK, so this is what we got from this element. So this guy should be equal 1 then beta equal 2 minus i. And this is exactly this. So this guy is in second row, which corresponds spatial 1, and in third column, which corresponds to spatial 2. And then we get another term. So we have anti-symmetric. This is usual anti-symmetric generator for rotation. Now, infinitesimal rotation. We know answer. We already got. So let's, this is just generator. But now we should uh, calculate. And we consider this. Infinitesimal rotation with omega 1, 2 equal minus omega 2, 1. This is theta much less 1. You see, we actually um, have answer for this infinitesimal rotation, right? So we can get, this is just generator. It's still not element of rotational or Lorentz group. To get it in the case of small omega, we should uh, consider this uh, combination, right? So let's, let's do this. So in this case, we have this. Now, <clears throat> we found 1, 2, 2, 1 is just with minus, right? And the same story here. So we have these guys give, they add actually, not subtract. And we have this theta and j for 1, 2, which we already calculated. And 
this guy is, let's consider expansion, first term unit matrix, and then this linear term. And now we know answer for J. Now we can write for our element, right? So this guy equal, let me write here. It add everywhere along diagonal one. That's it. New thing. Zero, zero, minus I. Zero, zero, one. Then I one zero and zero 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 one. So we have answer and here we should uh, yeah, that's it. Only point I should multiply by step, right? I should correct myself. Here I get um, minus i times minus i theta, and this is minus theta. And here, this is was incorrect, and this is theta. I just multiply minus i by minus i theta, and I get minus theta and plus theta. This is small rotation in x, y plane. Okay. Now let us consider Lorentz boost. So this I took J412, but let us consider J4, say, 0, 1. Then it's Lorentz boost along x coordinate. Some questions here. Yes, what please. Is that, what is that that you do in this class when there's a finite? Here? Here, right? Yeah. Okay, point is that, as I said before, this exponent, this is matrix element of rotation. But I want to consider it in the case when this guy is small then you can expand exponent, right, in Taylor series, right? So first term of exponent, of course, is 1, right? And linear term, uh, okay, sorry, by the way, <laughs> I still make mistake. Uh, there should be minus, correct. You should stop me. I will appreciate only. Just minus, right? My, uh, because my uh, definition of these generators was always with minus, right? So I keep only linear term, and then I got for small theta this rotation, OK? OK, now let us consider uh, Lorentz transformation, right? How do we find this uh, commutation relation and uh, the representation of the Okay. Uh, first of all, uh, knowing this representation for Lorentz group, you could easily evaluate commutator, right? We just know the symmetry, not this definition. No, this is definition of Lorentz group. Point is that this is not coarse plus in you know, representation of Lorentz group. It will take all my class to discuss all things. So Lorentz generators of Lorentz group, I just gave it, okay? And this is definition of Lorentz group, consider it, okay? And then again, I wrote this answer, just check that this guy, those four matrices, satisfy this commutator. Then it's four-dimensional, right? So this is, we cannot, you know, to follow step by step here uh, concerning Lorentz group. It's very interesting topic. I will give in the end of this class uh, text 
you can study by yourself if you like. But consider like that. By definition, Lorentz algebra described by those uh, generators, in particular so-called differential representation. They satisfy this commutation relation. Four-dimensional, I wrote the answer without derivation, and you just could check that it really satisfies. And then I illustrate as it acts. You know, I do not have time for more detailed description of this stuff. But thank you for your question. Actually, apparently, I um, now it's clear now, what is my strategy. It's a kind of illustration and description, not really derivation of everything concerning representation. It would be impossible. Just it's another course. Would be. Okay. Uh, so now let me consider boost. So what I illustrate now, I illustrate that this matrix, this representation for this matrix, six matrices, gives known um, transformation for four vectors. Okay. Now take mu zero mu equal. This is Lorentz boost along. Okay, so we now should consider this right again, but with different mu and nu, and we know that this guy is this i g alpha alpha prime, and now we should put alpha beta, but with nu, nu, zero, one, and we have now take into account that alpha prime zero for first term, and then beta equals zero for second, we get this answer g zero zero delta alpha zero delta beta one and minus g and here we have one one <coughs> because alpha prime equal one and delta zero beta delta one alpha So this guy could be rewritten in this way. E, I, right, I. Now this guy is one, but this guy is minus one. So it's different than in the previous example. So this is plus one, this is minus one. This is important. So we have first term, same sign, plus. But second change, we have minus, now it becomes plus. And we have delta zero beta, delta one alpha. Now matrix which correspond to this is this, zero i, zero, zero, i, 
zero, 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 zero. Let us compare this with that. It's a good matrix. You know why? Because it's what is called Hermitian in quantum mechanics, you should remember. Hermitian matrix eigenvalues of this guy are real. Plus, minus, plus one and minus one. So it's Hermitian. Or from algebra, I should know. But this guy is not. And actual eigenvalues of this guy, plus i, minus y. Non-hermitian. So it's crucial difference between rotation and Lorentz boost. Why it's important? Point is that if I have matrix which is uh, written something like in this form, and A is Hermitian, U is unitary. Unitary is simple. So this guy, if you take Hermitian conjugation, is just inverse. So in this case, rotation is described actually by unitary transformation. Actually, they are orthogonal because when uh, uh, elements of unitary matrix are real, like in the case of uh, this rotation, they are orthogonal. But in this case, they are not. So we will see this Lorentz boost is not described by unitary matrix in the case of four-dimensional representation, because this is non-Hermitian. OK, now let me consider infinitesimal transformation to write. Uh, we have this expression, right, for, I believe it's here. OK, right. OK, so let me write, use this formula for my case 0, 1. <coughs> it's, of course, easy, so now just repeat everything I did for the case of uh, rotational group, the previous one, rotation, and you will get it. Let me just to be not so detailed as before, but still so. This guy, this is always, of course, anti-symmetric. And this is, say, equal beta, which is, again, less than 1. So you should substitute now this beta here. And we will get for this uh, <laughs> now again Taylor expansion and this is it one beta zero 
zero, beta, one, zero, 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 one, zero, 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 one. Now I would like to write finite transformation. Actually, it will be you know, derivation of finite transformation in first assignment. But I will uh, um, write uh, just answers for mm, maybe actually I can use there is right. Finite transformation. Okay. I write answer and then you will work out this. So now I have rotation like before, but theta is not small. I will write answer, and then you will derive it. Okay, new guy appears, not just sign cos, hyperbolic sign. Hyperbolic cos. So we already derived, right, expression for J412 and for J401, I just derived. Right? So you know this. And I'm considering now finite. So this stuff. Now let me. Oh, okay. Maybe I will write in matrix form. We need just this line. If you substitute this, everything, those square and so on, then you will get uh, the following answer. The following matrix. Maybe it's better. Make more space here. I will write and then it will become clear. Zero. And here I have. Uh, zero. I. Beta. Or 
zero and zero 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 one. Okay, this part describes nothing else but usual rotation in X Y uh, plane. Let's call it U set, right? Uh, one, two. Determinant of this guy is, of course, one. Cos square plus sine square. I could write. And this is orthogonal or unitary, you can, you can say, map. Now let me write answer and we will stop for boost. Okay. Now my app. So I want just in matrix form to write this. Okay. Let me call it Lorenz Lambda Zero One, which is this. And this is answer will be. Hyperbolic beta. Sign hyperbolic beta. Zero, zero. Sign hyperbolic beta. Cos hyperbolic beta. Zero, zero, zero. Zero, one, zero, 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 one. Okay, let me recall you cos hyperbolic beta. This is one half. And sine hyperbolic beta. This is different. Okay, this guy is not, it's easy to check that it's not orthogonal because if you take transpo, uh, trans, transpose, it's not inverse. Transpose gives same matrix and it's not, uh, um, we cannot get one uh, considering square of this stuff, right? So. It's not uh, non-unitary. It means that in this case, lambda zero one, if I take uh, this Hermitian conjugation, is not inverse. But let's calculate determinant. It's easy to find determinant. This is cos hyper hyperbolic square uh, beta minus, and this is one. So it agrees with what I said in the very beginning, right? When I uh, started from Lorentz group, I got a relation that determinant of any Lorentz transformation is plus one or minus one not just for rotational, for all of them. But you see huge difference, huge difference. What is also interesting, and we stop here, that one can show that for the group like Lorentz group, there are no finite unitary transformation. It's impossible to get. 
There are unitary transformation of the Lorentz group, but all of them are infinite. So infinite dimensional matrices. So it shows that Lorentz group is very, very different from the rotational group. And essence of this difference is in the following, that rotation, to describe rotation, we need to consider simple parameters which are bounded. Angle from 0 to 2 pi. Such a group is called compact group. But Lorentz group boost, this beta could be infinite, right? And in this case, it's called non-compact group. And there is theorem. I will not prove it because I cannot. Theorem states like that, that there are no finite unitary transformation for any non-compact group. OK? So it's very, very special case. Are you hungry? <laughs> I should stop. <laughs> So uh, the class will start afternoon 3.30, right? 3.30 through 4.30, and I will follow. Okay. <laughs>